Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name's Charlie and today I'm going to walk you through the key features and setup of the ExpressQ 4K Media Player from Theatrix. We've already done an introduction video on the ExpressQ, so today I'm going to give you a full rundown where we'll cover key features, setup and control. But firstly, who are Theatrix? Based in Montreal, Theatrix Technologies are Canadian manufacturers of professional video solutions and as their UK distribution partners, we stock their award-winning, rugged and event-ready video signal converters, the X-Vision series, and also their ExpressQ 4K hardware media player. Built by industry veterans with years of hands-on experience, their products are engineered to solve many problems faced by video professionals when setting up and running an event. As you can see from the rugged housing, they are built to last and provide a hugely more reliable solution, especially when compared to other products on the market. And to back up the confidence that Theatrix have in their manufacturing and R&D, the converters and the Express Q come with a five-year warranty. Impressive, right? Anyway, that's enough background. Let's get started. When it comes to media playback, most solutions are either laptop-based, which introduces a slew of reliability problems, or media server-based, which are expensive and often require a lot of training to operate. Theatrix wanted to bridge that gap between laptops and media servers, and that's why they've created the ExpressQ. The ExpressQ 4K Media Player offers a professional and far more reliable alternative to a laptop, but one that doesn't require the upfront investment and cost of a media server. So, that means you can say goodbye to those software issues and depreciation costs of consumer laptops. The ExpressQ has been engineered to give you seamless, reliable 4K video playback. It's housed in a 1U rack chassis, so it can be easily integrated with your front of house rack and PPU, which houses all of your sound, lighting, or video control equipment. It features an onboard 1TB solid state M2 storage card, which will store up to 500 hours of HD playback. It supports nearly all common video picture and audio formats, as it has an integrated FFmpeg encoder, which converts any media file to one it can play. So it really will do nearly all video formats even those that your video playback software won't. But don't worry, we won't name any names. It's built on the battle-proven Linux OS, meaning the software is very robust, some say bomb-proof. It has two hardware engines, one for the operating system and one for dedicated playback, giving you a layer of redundancy and peace of mind. It has an inbuilt power supply with through power output, meaning you don't have to have any annoying wall warts anymore. And you've got three playback modes, playlist, A and B, and direct, or hot, as we like to call it. It has 16 configurable broadcast quality backlit key panel buttons. Easy for you to say. I'm talking about these ones on the front here. And you've also got five methods of control. You've got the buttons and the OLED screen on the front of the unit, the web GUI, Stream Deck integration, DMX, and REST APIs. We've got DMX, ArtNet, and SACN control for all you lighting techs out there. We've got native Stream Deck integration and control, that's a really cool feature that I can't wait to show you later. We've got the unique instant copy button, aka the panic button, to quickly extract media files from a USB stick. And probably the most underrated feature of all, you've got all of your professional connections. Now that's something you definitely don't get on a laptop. And that means you can go from using one of these, a little HDMI adapter, to this. Onto the back of the unit. We've got two 12G SDI outputs with Genlock, a locking HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, two analog audio XLR outputs with LED level meters. You also have SDI tri-level sync loop through connections on the back, along with one DMX universe, which is 512 channels, and a loop through DMX5 with an LED indicator. You have two gigabit ethernet ports, one on the front and one on the back, and both ports have a Neutrik Ethicon locking connector. Both ports also have their IP addresses, which are labelled on the front OLED screen. And finally, you've got a USB 3.0 on the front to quickly extract files from a USB stick, and a USB 2.0 on the back to connect your Elgato Stream Deck controller. Theatrix advertised that the Express Q can go from unboxing to setup in less than 10 minutes. I think that we should put that to the test. So, let's start the clock. So, number one, unbox the Express Q. In the box, you've got the unit itself, a Powercom power cable, and some additional key button labels for you to stick on the front of your unit. Next, put your Express Queue on the table, plug in the power to the back, and we're ready to get started. Next, plug your USB stick into the front of the unit and hold down the instant copy button until all of the contents have been transferred. 
Once you've imported your video content, press the main button, scroll down to playlist, create a new playlist. As you can see, the Express Queue will automatically label it with today's date. Scroll down to the playlist you just created, go to playlist actions, go to add media, select the files that you've just imported, and then add the video. To add your playlist to the queue, go into your playlist settings, go to playlist action, and press append to the queue. All those videos now will be added to the queue, ready for you to take. To make sure the videos in your playlist play without any interruption, go to each video in your playlist and change the trigger to end of previous. Once that's done, all you need to do is press take, and your playlist should now play. And this leads nicely onto the front panel. On the left, you've got 16 fully customizable broadcast quality buttons. You've got your OLED display in the middle. You've got your previous and next cue buttons play and pause, and take. Onto your menu control, you've got the back button and your menu knob, you've got your instant copy button, your USB input, and you've got your front ethernet port. Playback is really easy via the front panel on OLED display, but due to the nature of a one new product, it is quite small. So if you're looking for more of a visual control experience, then you're in luck, as the Express Queue can also be controlled from its browser-based web GUI. So, first of all, grab your laptop or your computer, Next, hook up your Express Queue via the Ethernet port on the back. You're going to want to find the IP address on the front of the unit. Here, you've got B for back and F for front. So the IP address we want to use is 192.168.2.2.1. Go back to your computer and change your Ethernet settings. Set your IP address to manual. Add the network portion of the address, so 192.168.2. Because the Express Queue is using IP host 21, we just need to use a different host, so we're going to use 20. Next, type in the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. Go to your browser, enter the IP. And just like that, you should now be in, and you should now be able to see the GUI on your computer. This is where the fun starts. So, we've hooked up our Express Queue to our laptop. It's really important to remember here that the computer isn't doing any of the processing, and it's purely a window into the settings of the Express Queue. That means that if your laptop crashes, it won't stop your video playback, which of course is a much more reliable way of working. This also means that you get added flexibility as you can control your Express Queue from any laptop no matter its processing capability. Back over to the web GUI. The first thing we're going to do is actually change the light mode to dark. As soon as you open the web GUI, it should take you to the presenter view. You've got live control, media management, USB storage, playlist management, hardware remotes, and settings. And at the top here, you've also got presenter view, Upload Center, Conversion Center, and Device Information. First of all, go to USB Storage, plug in your USB via the front or the back of the unit, find your media files, go into the folder they're saved, highlight all the files you want to import, and then once you're happy, press Import Media. These should now start importing, and it also gives you a helpful progress bar as well. Here, you can see the Express Queue converting your media files to one it can play, thanks to its FFmpeg encoder. That's our content loaded up. Now, let's create a playlist. Go to Playlist Management on the left, press Create New Playlist on the right, name your playlist, open your playlist, click the Add to Playlist button, find and select the media you'd like to add, and your video should now be loaded in. And this is where you can play with the triggers, the transitions, loops, start points, end points, and fade in and fade out times. You can also change the order of your videos by simply dragging and dropping them into the order you prefer. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to change the trigger for all of these videos to end of previous, meaning that when they play in the playlist, they'll play in a perfect loop. A great feature of the playlist management is that you can also select a start point and an end point in your video. 
This means that if a client gives you some dodgy media with say 30 seconds at the end with nothing on it, then you can actually skip straight past that and onto your next video. Or if there's 30 seconds in the middle, which you really need, you can set the start point to the start of that and the end point just to the end and it'll only play that bit. Once you're happy with your playlist, go back to the live control tab on the left. This takes us to the live control center page. This screen is split into four quadrants. We've got now playing, up next, media management, and the live queue. You can resize these quadrants however you like using the horizontal and the vertical bars in the middle of the page. To add your playlist, go to live queue, press append playlist, select your playlist and double click the first video or press take to start playing. And that takes us onto hardware remotes and that's where the magic really happens. Here you can fully customize the 16 broadcast buttons on the front of your express queue. And if you want even more control, the Express Queue has a native integration with Elgato Stream Deck controllers. Just plug in your Stream Deck into the back of the unit, go to Hardware Remote Settings in the Web GUI, and you'll see that it automatically recognizes the Stream Deck controller. Select this, and here you can simply drag and drop your shortcut buttons to any position you like. Oh, and did we mention that it has 256 pages? I'm not sure if you'll ever use them all, but it's good to know that they're there anyway. So, let's build a basic layout together. First, I'm going to add some basic key actions. Back in the queue, next in the queue, play and pause, and take. Now some navigation buttons. I'm going to add up page, down page, a home page, and also a jump to page. Next, I'm going to take you through the Express Queue settings on the web GUI, but remember, you can do all this on the OLED display. It's just a little bit more visual to do it on the GUI, so we're going to do it that way. From the top, General, you've got three playback settings, Playlist, AB Preset, and Direct. Playlist lets you use the queue to define your playback sequence. Direct mode lets you select media to be played back immediately. You'll notice that if I switch to this mode, everything goes hot and can be instantly playable. Key buttons set to media playback go green on the front of your express queue and are assigned a green ring on the Elgato Stream Deck. And then you have AB Preset. This is a halfway house between playlist and direct modes and lets you cue the next media whilst your current media is playing. This means you can ride your playback one video in advance if you're unsure of what video sequence is required for your event. We've got resume on start. What a great simple feature, especially for exhibitions or applications where your client simply needs to power up the unit and resume their playback. To all hiring event companies out there who specialize in exhibition services, I bet this will minimize the support calls you get from customers. You can rename your device. I'm going to rename this one Demo Player 2. You can change the language and you can also change from dark or to light mode. Onto your video settings. You can change the master intensity, the resolution, the colorimetry, and you also have advanced video settings letting you go up to RGB 444 or 12-bit color depth. Of course, this depends on your video content and your preferred output options, respectively. Test patterns. You've got a huge choice of test patterns and you can also import your own. You can also add a moving box to make sure your display is live, not frozen, and you can trigger a one kilohertz tone to make sure your audio is live as well. Geometry. Now this is a cool feature. There are applications where you need a separate scaling solution, so for example a scalar switcher, but for most small applications this is a great quick fix and you can easily scale your video to your size display. You can preserve the aspect ratio, or not, and you can also do this by eye, or also type in the exact resolution required. Or there's also a button that quickly fits it to your output. Audio, you've got volume, mono, left or right settings, pretty easy. For network settings, you can get pretty creative with, and this could be a whole video on itself, so I won't go into this today. Multi-device. You can link devices together so they all follow a master unit, and this might be helpful in retail applications where, say, your customer might want to deploy a new advertisement video across multiple stores. DMX control. For all you lighting techies out there, you can also trigger a video playback and color settings via DMX channels, meaning that your light techies can control their express queue from a lighting console. This is quite specialist again, so I won't go into full detail today, but if you want to learn more, please make sure you contact our technical sales team. Snapshots. You can copy settings and media to other ExpressQ units. You've got date and time settings, and this is where you also do your software updates. 
This is super easy to do, and I encourage you that you do it as soon as you unbox your Express Queue. That way, you know that you're running the most up-to-date and recent version of the software. Whew, that was a lot to get through. I hope you kept up, and if you're still watching, thank you. To conclude, the Express Queue is a fantastic choice if you're looking to upgrade your video media playback from a laptop, but don't quite want to make that large investment on a video media server. If you're looking to upgrade your video playback, please contact our sales team on 01525 85085, email sales at leisuretech.co.uk, or just go on our website. That's enough for today. My name's Charlie. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.